Hey everyone, it's Clint. Welcome to Sweetcast. I made a video I was all ready to, to, to do today. I made it last night. And then about five minutes later, I realized I was wrong about one thing that really would make it seem like I was an idiot. And so I can't post that video. <laughs> I would immediately have to post a retraction. So I want to do this instead, totally different topic, but it's the secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election. Uh, I don't want to really get into election specifics, but what I want to get in here into is the strategy. And this is culture war. This is, I'm, I'm separating here politics, which you can, I think, opt in or opt out of. And then there's culture war that it doesn't matter what you do. It'll find you. It goes to your entertainment. It goes to your, your university. It goes uh, everywhere. It will follow you. It'll find you. It'll beat you into submission. Uh, if it can. Uh, so before we get into this, Thrilling Comics, number one, this is a campaign run by David Furr. I'm being published in it though. And I wrote the Silver Streak story. So really cool story. I'm excited about it. It's definitely going to print. Uh, they leaned, made the campaign more lean. And so back it, you will get your book for certain. Also, Fatals on Indiegogo, massive, massive success. Thanks to everybody that backed this. Um, and on to it. All right. So Time Magazine posted this article. Why did they at all, let alone this soon after the inauguration? It'll be a mystery to everyone. The secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election. That is uh, total madness. And as you can see here, people posting screenshots from this and having a heyday. It actually says a well-funded cabal of powerful people ranging across industries and ideologies, working together behind the scenes to influence pre uh, perceptions, change rules and laws, steer media coverage, and control the flow of information. Yes, th these are the people that did it, actually patting themselves on the back for doing it. I cannot believe this. <laughs> It's insane that they even uh, published this. Um, so basically what I want to get into is how these things actually work. I'm not talking about conspiracy theories. I'm talking about conspiracies, proven, uh, admitted to conspiracies. Now, a few years ago when I got into comics and I was making YouTube videos, it shocked me at how many internet left-wing activists there were that were defending major corporations like Disney, you know, Marvel and DC. Why were they defending Disney when a few short years ago, they were presumably protesting in the streets, Occupy Wall Street. How is it that this unholy alliance got together? Well, the way that things work, uh, as in most things, it's a, it's more normal. And the people involved talk themselves into it being, a normal situation. They also live in echo chamber. Everyone's in an echo chamber, uh, you know, creating their own world around them. And to them, it seems logical. If it's such an important thing, it's willing to, you know, pull out all the stops. They can do whatever they want to change this election, uh, in the direction that they away from the direction that they feared it was going. And so as we look into this, I realized that it's the same throughout Here's how it worked. There's a guy that they're going to call the architect in here. His name is Mike Podhorzer. I, I don't know if I pronounce his name right. It doesn't matter. But essentially, he was a political strategist. And he would show up on cable news and explain things. He would actually go through and post videos or do some kind of, I don't know if it was a live stream or a podcast. It sounded like it was private. But he would go through little five-minute segments on what needed to happen. He would explain and, and lay out exactly what needed to happen for them to win the election. The second part of this is uh, specific people needed to fulfill those roles, willingly accepted and uh, stepped into those roles as outlined by Podhorser. Sound crazy? Bill, it's real. That's what happens when apparently people get desperate enough. If you have Trump derangement syndrome hard enough, that's what'll happen. Uh, so this sounds strange, but I see, again, in comics, we've seen the same thing for years now. They have a whole five-step strategy. This article is so lengthy, and there's so many specifics. Not only that, but there's names of people. It's insane. 
But basically what you have here is major corporations and left-wing activists working together to the same goal, to the same end. Now, I kind of wonder if maybe this is part of the reason why major corporations have become so woke is because they want to appeal to that kind of audience to get done what they need to have what they want done. Does that mean that they'll they'll drop the wokeness? It's it's literally pandering to the the right kind of people to get done what they want done. I'm not sure here, but that's kind of what it looks like. Um, all right, so basically, it's it's a war. It's a war of words. Um, I don't want to. Let's see. I don't want to go through all of this. They call it securing the vote. Devote uh, the dis, disinformation defense. Just calling everything disinformation. Let's see. I got to read. Uh, yeah. Um, when you get attacked, the instinct is to push back, call it out, say this isn't true. Uh, Quinn says, but the more engagement something gets, the more the platform boosts it. The algorithm reads that as, oh, this is popular. People want more of it. The solution, she concluded, was to pressure platforms to enforce their rules. Maybe you heard this an awful lot. And there was a tremendous amount of pressure on Twitter to, and they could, you could define their, this. The problem is their rules were not clearly defined. You could push them to say, you have to abide by your rules. And therefore the logical conclusion is you got to ban Trump. You got to ban anybody. You got to ban these words. You have to put out, you know, out right after the election happened, YouTube, Twitter, everybody was posting things that were quasi fact checking. They were basically to instill doubt on whatever was being said <laughs> that they didn't like, uh, truly madness. Let's see the platform have policies against certain types of malign, uh, behavior, but they haven't been enforcing them. And so of course they're going to, they're going to, uh, you know, they're going to define that however they want and basically push these platforms to enforce them so they can get what they want. All right. So I'm going to, Let's see, scroll down here. This was the most interesting part of it, I think, to me, and it was how close we came. Uh, so something I thought about, I, I hadn't thought about at the time. How much uh, protesting and rioting have you seen all throughout 2020? A lot. If you've watched the news, there's been an awful lot, okay? Why is it that when Trump supporters stormed the Capitol, there was no counter protest? at least none that was reported on, it appeared to be, uh, from all standards, quiet. It was one-sided. I'm not talking about conspiracies or anything like that. Everything we saw at face value, it was only Trump supporters. Would you believe that that would happen in the same year that there were protests and riots all the way across the country over everything from po police violence to Trump to anything the most important day to left-wing activists presumably would be the ratification of the election and no counter protesters showed up. This didn't occur to me until time magazine pointed it out. Why did that happen? That's because the political strategist, uh, pod Horser, told left-wing activists to back off and why? Because the hope is you set the stage that, violence, protests, uh, uh, political upheaval is the norm. You back off when it's the most important moment to do so. You've provoked an, uh, an, a reaction from the opposite side and you're going to back up and allow it to happen. I would say that's a conspiracy theory. How would you, how would you even make that happen? But they're bragging about it. That's exactly what happened. The same thing in comics. I believe that all this stuff has been tested on micro levels all throughout culture. Um, it's the same reason we saw, again, total uh, like fighting and engaging in weird wars over comic books. And then all of a sudden, one day, you back out. It's over. You finished. <laughs> the worst things that I can see that happened in comics from, you know, my side. Uh, or exactly that. It's somebody being provoked and reacting and lashing out and probably ways that maybe they regret. Okay. Um, little ways, but those are the way, those are all the things that are posted on Mark Wade's website. 
Those are, those are all the things that'll be remembered forever. And, uh, it is not a conspiracy theory to say that that's intentional. It is plainly written out right here. There's a guy that essentially wrote the book on how to do it. They discouraged it. They strenuously discouraged counter protests, counter activity there. And not only that, they listened. The activists listened to them. This is insane. This is now how the world works. Uh, these strategies are practiced in smaller scales. We saw it over the past few years. I have personally. And then now here you go at an election. So the, the answer to the question, did they steal the election? I mean, it, not how you would think. This is how it was done. It was done over the, the course of at least a year. I think the, the tactics and strategies were practiced and proven on smaller scales in the culture war. And then it was implemented, uh, again, right out in the open. None of it is like really that much of a secret. It's, it's out in the open. Um, but people followed their roles. They, they went along the lines. I don't know how long this alliance will last, but if you have this much power, um, you're going to do it again. Now, I know I'm going to get a few people saying, you're a conspiracy theorist. Again, read the article Time Magazine posted at the secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election. Um, and uh, who's going to deny it if, if they, they themselves are saying it? I don't understand why they did this. Uh, but anyway, it's instructive. Let me know what you think. I'm not trying to be depressing, but I, it's just, it's interesting to me. And it's also like, I want to be, <laughs> I want to be careful. There's going to be more self-segregation, I think, in media and entertainment because more of this kind of stuff is going to happen. Um, but they're not going to be able to control it. If you're making your own thing, there's going to be more pushback. I expect it again to be tested and proven on smaller scales. Like yes, even in comics, um, so that it can also be used elsewhere. So thanks very much. Appreciate you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.